that's number one. You kind of reset your painful tender to the touch. May right, also same shoulder length and the other. Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Real Health Podcast presented by the Frederick Podcast Network on listenfrederick.com. Uh, you certainly can find us on every uh, platform. And the Real Health Podcast is where we take all the latest news and information uh, uh, that you may find in mainstream media regarding health and wellness. And we'll read it for you. We'll summarize it for you. We'll explain it to you to the best uh, of our abilities and our purposes so that you can use that information to feel better, get stronger, live longer, and feel younger. So I so am... fun. Dr. Amir Rashidian, a chiropractor, and Brandy Rashidian is my other half partner in crime. And uh, she's actually the genius behind what we're going to talk about today. So, I don't know about uh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it, 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 it actually is, it, this is, this is um, really cool, really neat information. Um, so we're pretty much going to stay on one article, but we have different versions and different yeah. um, uh, side, um, you'll know what I mean. Um, we're going to expand off. on it just a yeah. little bit because I think this is a topic where, um, like, if I were to say to you guys, we're going to talk about um, voltage and electricity and frequencies, you're automatically probably going to start thinking about. I dozed off just just there, just when you said I dozed wow. off a little bit. I fell asleep. Wow. Was it my tone? No. Just Was the it the words. frequency of my speech? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you, I think automatically you'd probably be thinking about your electrical box or like, you know, you'd be thinking about your house elec electricity or, but there's, everything has energy, right? Like there's energy in everything and everything operates at a different frequency and those frequencies can affect each other. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, it's, it's really cool. It's so funny because when, when you start talking about vibration and frequencies, there's a lot of Christians right now that are going to go, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. New age. Stuff. New, this is not new age people. I'm just going to tell you yeah. as, as a person of faith, and a person who like loves the design of the human body and what it's capable of. There's so much about our bodies and our world that we just do not fully know or understand. And so this is a really deep topic talking about the energy that our body emits. I'm not talking about woohoo energy. I'm not talking, we're not talking about any of that. We're talking about like legitimate energy and frequencies that affect your health. Right. And, and, and the, so you know how there are some people who, who get a disease and they recover from it. Yeah. And there are some people who get the same disease and it becomes chronic. You've heard that term chronic. Yeah. Meaning they, to them. they don't recover from it. It stays with it. They stay with that disease long term. I, the one I think about is Lyme disease. Mm. I know so many people who get Lyme disease, they get over it in a, in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, they go on a course of antibiotics. Yep. They're done and they don't deal with it anymore. I have patients who say, oh, I had Lyme disease 12 years ago. And um, yeah, didn't, didn't really bother me. It doesn't affect me now. So you go, then, if we're so similar, what's so different between those exactly. individuals? What, why does something become chronic in some people and doesn't become chronic? We're talking viral infections. We're talking um, heart disease. We're talking kidney disease. We're, you know, anything and everything that becomes chronic. Immune system's chronic, always low. Then we need to figure out. And we talk, touched on this last week a little bit about how cells have similar parts and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they need to be treated similarly. And there's certain things that that apply across the board. These are these are rules and laws of nature that we cannot ignore. And so when it comes to voltage, uh, pH, uh, frequency of uh, um, electrons in, mm -hmm. in the body, I was a chemistry major in, in college. Not that I claim to remember anything I learned, that was 50 years ago. We're going to see ago. what you can recall for this, or 30, for this topic. 30, I said 50 years ago. That was 30 years ago. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> That's uh, funny. I don't think colleges existed 50 years ago. Just kidding. They did. <laughs> Chemistry didn't, but everything else did. 
<laughs> so I'll, t I'll tell you what, uh, this, this one article, uh, it's interesting. Uh, a friend of ours, Ian, gave me the magazine mm -hmm. uh, Nexus, Nexus magazine. And in it, there was this article where Dr. Joel Marcola, who we, we've we met mm -hmm. in person and we know um, in Had passing, good conversation. Um, we absolutely respect his, his work and what he's done in the health and wellness field. So he's interviewing another doctor named Jerry Tennant. Mm -hmm. And so um, the article is a transcript of this interview. And um, so it starts out, Joe Marcola. Can, can we back, just just wait two seconds though. I wanna make sure that we define a couple of terms before yeah. we get into this because the interview, this is a transcribed interview between uh, Joe and um, Jim and um, so I want to make sure that everyone has like a, a definition uh, for these terms that are going to be used. So when they're talking about frequencies and power and, and energy and stuff, uh, we're all on the same page. So a voltage in electricity, voltage represents uh, the pressure pushing electric current through a wire, right? So it's measured in volts while frequency rever refers to the number of times an alternating current uh, completes a cycle per second. Uh, which is measured in hertz. Uh, es essentially, voltage is like the pressure in a water hose, while frequency is often the water flow uh, changes directions, changes direction per second, is how often the water flow changes direction per second, sorry. So voltage represents potential uh, difference between two points in a circuit measured in volts, while frequency represents the number of cycles per second of an alternate alternating current measured in hertz. I don't know if that helps at all. I also want to just say that um, there are different types of frequencies. While we often think of sound frequencies, but even light frequencies, electromagnetic uh, waves, and other forms of energy can also be described by their frequencies. So there, there could be a couple of different things that, that we're talking about, um, not just sound frequencies, but it could be a light frequency. So there's several different kinds of frequencies that could come into play here okay perfect hopefully that helps a little bit as we begin yeah and we may re, re, re uh, reference those yes. definitions as we go so uh dr marcola asked uh you can reverse most common cause the most common cause of blindness in the united states which is age-related macular degeneration within a few days wow and that's what he was impressed with and that's why he started to interview this dr jerry tennant so Dr. Tennant said, my story actually begins when I developed encephalitis. I got to where I could see a patient and know what was wrong, but I couldn't remember how to write a prescription. Mm. In so his brain wasn't working. In addition to uh, developed spastic movements, I would be sitting here and do something like this where he's imitating jerking movement in the upper ar uh, upper body and arms which doesn't work really well if you're operating inside somebody's eyeball. For, for all of those reasons, I quit working at the end of November 1995. I spent about the, the next seven years in bed, sleeping 16 hours a day. I went to the best doctors I could find. He said, I used to um, uh, do a lot of cataract surgery, corneal surgery, um, uh, etc. And uh, all of a sudden, I couldn't remember how to do it. Uh, when I began to get sick, I went to the best doctors I could find in New York, Boston, and so forth. They all said, well, sorry, you have three viruses in your brain. We don't know what to do about it. Don't call us. We'll call you. So mm. I had two or three hours a day in which I could understand the newspaper. Then, like a light switch, it would go off, and I couldn't understand it anymore. During those two or three hours a day, I could think. I realized I had to figure out how to get myself well because no one else was going to do it. Well, I I like that he came to that. I, I wish he had come to that even sooner, and I wish a how lot of people that are suffering from chronic um, disease how, processes. How often do we say this? You need to be yeah, your own doctor. Hundred percent. You need to be your own doctor. Right. 
Yeah, nobody's going to advocate for you like you will. You know, this reminds me of, do you remember when Boo, we had a boxer named Boo, and uh, she got encephalitis. She had hydrocephalus. Mm -hmm. Oh, similar. Right? So she had fluid around the brain. Mm -hmm. So a little bit different, but it has a lot of similar... Um, because encephalitis is an infection. infection. Hydrocephalus is not necessarily an infection. It's just fluid not draining from the skull, but not, it affects the brain similarly. Yeah. And it had some similar symptoms yep. that I remember. That was hard to watch. She would have seizures. Mm, yeah, badly. Okay, moving on. Sorry. So uh, he said, I had the idea that if I could figure out how to make one cell work, I could make them all work because although they look different, they really all have the same component parts. They just have different software. I began to read cellular biology books, which I hadn't done for about 30 years. He sounds like me. <laughs> Cells must run at a, and he said these books told him that the cell must run at a pH between 7.35 and 7.45. So pH is a measure of acidity. Mm -hmm. So the higher the number, the less acidic something is, the lower the number, the higher the acidity. So like hydrochloric acid in the stomach has really high acidity. It's like mm -hmm. a two or a three, I believe. And then soap, which is more like a base, slippery, it dissolves oily things, that, that might have a pH of 11, 12, 13, uh, and so everything is in between. Water typically is a pH of 7, which is neutral. If it's good water, right? But some, it can have lower or a higher pH is better. Um, but while he's saying cells need to be between 7.35 mm. and 7.45. Okay. So just slightly above 7. 7 is dead center neutral, not acid, not base. So this is slightly less acidic than neutral is what the yeah. body should be what water should but be. but interesting it's not completely right it doesn't it's not completely alkaline it's not completely yeah. acidic like that it's the body wants neutral. that balance yeah. yeah that's interesting so he said i began to just realize that ph is the name given to voltage in a liquid now mm. this i can resonate with having studied chemistry uh in college i understand uh this but let, let's see how he describes it if you think about the voltage that runs these electric lights uh, or this computer, he's obviously pointing to lights in the computer that we're using, that's called conductive electricity. That means electrons are moving along copper wires. But in a liquid, you have a different situation. A liquid can either be an electron donor or an electron stealer. Mm. By convention, if the liquid that you're interested in is an electron stealer you put a plus sign in the front of the voltage now remember uh protons and neutrons are in the center of center of a cell of a of a um atom and electrons are on the outside so atoms come together for molecules mm -hmm. so everything in the world is made up of molecules which is composed of single atoms mm -hmm. and so uh if if the if this atoms in this liquid have a positive charge mm -hmm. that means they want electrons to become neutral nutrient uh neutral uh, so that means um they are they get a plus and they're more acidic or ph is lower if it's an electron donor mm -hmm. you put a minus on uh minus sign in front of it so okay. that that means it has has more electrons so you can give electrons mm. so that they're um so it, it even in the body we call that oxidation and reduction reduction is anti-aging oxidative stress promotes aging mm. so that basically is what he's talking about so it says uh, it's much easier to understand if you have it read out in millivolts because you really can better understand what's going on a ph of 7.35 is the same thing as negative 20 millivolts Meaning, neg remember, negative is, is a good thing. It means it has a lot of electrons. Right. So negative 20 millivolts of electron donor. A pH of 7.45 is negative 25 millivolts of electron donor. Cells are designed to run in an environment at negative 20 to negative 25 millivolts, which is equivalent to what he said before. Right. The pH of 7.35 and 7.45, you want every cell to be in that pH range. 
if you measured in millivolts, you wanted to be between negative 20 and negative 25. He said, I hadn't seen anybody who was really talking about voltage. They just said, well, you have to fix the pH. <laughs> well, to me, that was a nebulous idea. I mean, uh, if it said it has something to do about the voltage, then at least I could get my hands and my mind around what it meant. But it just said, well, fix pH or eat alkaline foods and all that sort of thing. You know, I was told that once. Do you remember? Yeah. During um, all of my pregnancies, but the first was was much more severe. I was getting, I was so sick uh, for the first four months of my pregnancy with Navid, and I would throw up. I threw up all day long. It was easily a good twelve times a day. I just could not keep anything down. Uh, and so then, um, I don't even think it was my. OB, I think it was our primary mm -hmm. who said, you need to really be looking at an alkaline diet. Yeah. So you need to be eating more alkaline foods. And see, that gets complicated because what I know is it's it's not the food that has to be alkaline. It's the response of the body that has to be alkaline. Mm. So for example, citric, uh, citrusy fruit, mm -hmm. food like oranges, they're acidic. Right. But they the body becomes more alkaline when you eat them. Right. It's apple kind of like cider apple vinegar. cider vinegar. It's acidic. It's it's very high high acid. You know, right. uh, I don't know what the pH of right. apple cider vinegar is, but I'm assuming it's like four, four or five. And, it's nowhere close to seven. That is the stuff that I did though. But yeah, but so what you do is take litmus paper and touch it to your tongue, and litmus paper tells you if your saliva is acidic mm -hmm. or basic. So, it won't tell you the number, but you can put it next to a key and it tells you roughly what the number it's kinda is. It's kind of like when you test your pool water. And yeah, exactly. So you test your saliva and it'll say it's acidic. You drink some apple cider vinegar and wait a minute or two and test it again. It'll be alkaline. Even mm -hmm. though you just ate acid, right. your body became alkaline. Mm -hmm. So fascinating. It's the response of the body. So, And I, I don't know if he'll mention that in this article or not. Um, it says, but when, when I began to get down to the rock bottom that cells require negative 25 millivolts to work and they require negative 50 millivolts to repair them Ooh. when they wear out all of a sudden that made a whole lot of difference wow so he's saying for normal function negative 20 to negative 25 but if there's damage to those cells and they need to be repaired you need a negative 50 double yeah that's makes complete sense double the voltage. how do we do that he said it uh, became obvious that cells need double the voltage to make new new ones that is required to make one run healing requires negative 50 millivolts the next obvious question was okay how do i measure it well it turned out that dr hiroki nakatani in japan was the first person to use microelectronics to measure acupuncture meridians he published his work in 1951. I was able to get Dr. Nakatani's rather rudimentary device and found that my brain was running somewhere between negative two and negative four microvolts <whistles> instead of the negative 25 that it needed to run and the negative 50 it needed to repair. Now it was obvious why it didn't work. How neat is that? I want to get this uh, Nakatani device. Well, they actually, he's um, Jim, yeah. Dr. Jim has, Jerry. or Jerry, sorry. Can we call you Jim? Uh, Jay. Seems to fit. Jay. Um, he actually developed, there's a handheld and a larger uh, scalar, I think it's called device, nice. that really helps to affect the cells so there are two they run s somewhere in the realm of like you know 2500 to three thousand dollars but i mean it makes so much sense because in instead of chemistry we're looking at physics right instead of uh the the just the molecular structure now we're looking at how those molecules are uh um communicating with each other right. molecules communicate with each other by transferring electrons right and so this makes part and an electron as as electrons are transported back and forth that's how voltage is created right so it makes sense 
Um, we need to really look there into that so device. There's so many disease processes. I, I could go purchase it right now. We, we probably, maybe we should do a part two and maybe like we, we buy it and try it and talk about it at that point. Okay, and see. if this is something that you guys are interested in, please comment or give us a thumbs up uh, for this episode and let us know if, you know, getting one of these machines and like testing it out would be something that you guys would be interested in. Um, I would 100% be interested in it um there's a couple of disease processes i would like to put it up against too yeah i think it would be really cool to see what kind of change we could get he said the reality is once i discovered that my brain didn't have enough voltage to work then all of a sudden things began to be more apparent about what i had to do to start getting myself well i ran across some russian work where dr alexander karasev had identified the waveform that would transfer electrons to cell membranes. Hmm. I discovered that actually it had been already discovered and uh, created in a device called the Lord Baltimore device in 1892. Wow. See, they, they call those 1890 people quacks. Um, uh, but you, you know what? That There's there's some too. 1895 that is, is when so cool. chiropractic was discovered. And he talked about the tonal model of right. wave transmission which to this day a lot of neurologists say it's quackery but it's not because they even discovered the soliton wave that transmits uh nerve impulses faster than the electron right. transport right uh, and the action potential so mm. it says i was able to acquire a device that had those waveforms in it i began to treat myself i began to get better i met a woman who was a nurse here in dallas area who had lymphoma she had been treated multiple times with chemotherapy and radiation at MD Anderson. They eventually told her, sorry, that's all we can do, go home. She had gone to Mexico and had met Dr. Bob Vance from Las Vegas, who had treated her. She came back home and she was completely clear from her malignancies. Mm -hmm. I decided I would go down and see Dr. Vance and see how in the world they did this. So uh, I guess this is Thank what Thank goodness for people like Dr. Bob Vance, because I really wish more physicians would step outside of the box of their schooling and outside the box of the pharmaceutical companies' education that they're pushing into medical schools and and allow doctors to be doctors and to be the natural. I, I assume that people go into medicine because they they want to find these ways to to help people live and be better but guys pharmaceuticals is not the only way and it's a way that can cause so many other systems to fail like what if we could do this without pharmaceuticals like what if we could just dealing with the the electrical system and what's so bad about that like why are we so against doing something that isn't going to damage our liver and and like make massive i just don't understand like this to me is so exciting i wish i could take it back into history and and help people you know I that i care about with it like this is this is amazing i hate to say it's cutting edge because man 1892 they were doing it yeah, cutting. Yeah, we cut it. We cut it right out of the potential. Pretty sad. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and there's reasons for that that we can't get into. But um, so he said, I finally understood that the body is constantly wearing itself out and having to make new cells. Mm. You got new cones in your macula of your eye every 48 hours. Wow. It's the most rapidly changing part of the body. The lining of the gut is guts uh, replaced every three days. Mm -hmm. I've held, heard every three and a half days, but I, I, it's accurate. The skin that uh, you are sitting in today is only six weeks old. Mm -hmm. I was told 30 days, but either way, it doesn't pretty matter. Pretty close. Your liver is eight weeks old. Your nervous system's eight months old. That I didn't know. I thought the nervous system, I mean. Well, there are some things like the brain and the, I mean, the brain cells, I guess, must regenerate at some level, yeah. right? Because it says, but like the spinal cord and things like that yeah. are not as regenerative. 
or so we think. Yeah. Maybe there's more regenerative possibilities. Every, every two than we years, think. that means every two years you have three new nervous systems. That's crazy. One of the things I began to realize then is that chronic disease only occurs when you lose the ability to make new cells that work. I mean, I think a fifth grader could understand that. Probably a five-year-old could understand that. I want to go home and tell my boys that and see their response. And they'd yeah. be like, yeah, well, Makes that's sense. common sense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if the 14-year-old would get it, but the 8-year-old would definitely get it. Sure. The 11-year-old yeah. would get it. You know, because, I mean, it makes sense, right? Because you, your cells don't live forever, right? So these cells, they all die. They get replaced with new ones. But they're not being replaced at, a, at the same rate. Yeah. Or they're being replaced with cells that aren't as effective. Yeah. That's chronic disease. Yeah, and for those that don't believe that cells do regenerate, you recall there's something called exfoliation. Mm -hmm. So um, you can you can exfoliate all day, but you're you're going to have new skin um, that's yeah. going to get produced. Your so. skin replaces itself. Yep. Your bones replace themselves. Everything in your body is constantly repairing, and regenerating everything. Yeah. And and uh, voltage has a lot to do with that. And and how does the body communicate? It's through nerves, and nerves transmit electrical impulses. Mm -hmm. It's all electric. I mean, it makes it makes really good sense. Um, so he said, what you'll find is the characteristic of all chronic disease is inadequate voltage. You don't have the negative twenty five microvolts to run it and or you don't have the negative 50 volt millivolts to make a new one. Mm -hmm. Think about if you're living in Texas and a tornado comes through and blows your house to the ground and you have to build a new one. You have to have everything it takes to make a house. For example, people often come in with a sack full of nutrients and say, are these any good? <laughs> <laughs> that happens here all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, they bring in their supplements or bottle of, bottles of pills. Are these any good? He said, I would say, yeah, they help make new cells, but you can't build a new house with doorknobs and bathroom tiles. You need doorknobs and bathroom tiles, but you can't build a new house with them. You have to have the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be sure that you have everything it takes to make a cell. And then you have to deal with whatever toxins that are hanging around. That leads us directly into what is the body's power pack battery system and wiring system that provides the voltage for everything to work. It turns out that we have four different battery systems in the body. This, this was all new information to me, what he's talking about. Cool. Because I, I thought... You know, the mitochondria of the cell was what produced energy mm -hmm. in every cell. And that's that's kind of like the power plant. Mm -hmm. But I didn't think of it as a battery. So basically, yes, that produces one type of the batteries he talks about. Mm -hmm. But it produces the battery. The battery is what carries the energy. Mm -hmm. It's it it's it, but it makes again it makes sense. It reminds me of my biochemistry classes and everything else. I so didn't take said, biochemistry, so I have not been thinking much about mitochondria. So I'm just saying, as right. I think the vast majority of people don't. <laughs> but you, you 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 know. But we should because it's important. Fun fact is, our your your kids have your mitochondria, not mine. What? Yeah, that's why know. that's why every child is bad. genetically more related to the mom than dad because the dad. Uh, only um, gives the Y chromosome, mm -hmm. uh, but sperm doesn't have mitochondria in it, mm -hmm. or, or the, the Y chromosome doesn't carry the mite. So, but the egg has mitochondria in it, and that becomes fertilized, and so all your sons have your mitochondria. You're welcome. <laughs> Mine were better. I couldn't give them. <laughs> <laughs> Cost too much. Mitochondria. So now, uh, so he talks about four different, it turns out that we have four different battery systems in the body that make cells work. Now the biggest one and the one that's often overlooked is the muscle batteries. Mm. Our muscles are piezoelectric. How cool is that? What does that funny word mean? If you take a piece of quartz and you squeeze it with a pair of pliers, it emits electrons. Mm. So the concept of when you distort something and it causes it to emit electrons is called piezoelectricity. 
when I move my muscles, I emit electrons because I am distorting my muscles. Fortunately, while I'm doing that, my muscles are rechargeable batteries. Mm. At the same time, I'm emitting electrons, I'm sorting, I'm storing them. The way wow. the body recharges its muscle battery pack is simply to move and exercise. We are designed to keep our main battery pack charged up. Keep so moving. isn't that funny? And we always say uh, motion is life, right? We always say, you know, it's funny because what happens, the more you sit, the more you don't oh, move, yeah. the, the more, more tired. Diseases you have. Yeah, and the more tired you are, the more depressed you get. The... They used to tell people don't run too long because you'll get hip arthritis. <laughs> I'm like, everybody who gets hip arthritis and needs a hip replacement is because they sit too much. Right. <laughs> Sorry. That was snortable. <laughs> that was funny. Good job. Welcome. Appreciate that. That probably had a high frequency and a couple of volts <laughs> added to your cells. When you, you should snort more often. Um, our muscles are stacked one on top of each other in a very specific order, like batteries in a flashlight to form a power pack. Every organ in the body has its own battery pack, which is a stack of muscle batteries. Mm. These batteries are surrounded by fascia. Fascia is the white glistening, uh, glistening, stuff you see when you carve the Thanksgiving turkey. The interesting thing about fascia is that it's a semiconductor. What in the world is a semiconductor? Well, a semiconductor is an arrangement of molecules that's designed to move electrons at, a, at the speed of light, mm. but only in one direction. Mm. I mean, I, I knew there were sim semiconductors in uh, I almost called them silly conductors <laughs> like silicone isn't silicone a semiconductor uh, a silly conductor. that I'm not sure anyways like uh, in in uh, computer chips and so on mm. and that's that's what basic discovery of semiconductors was what made Silicon Valley and all that stuff oh interesting who knew our bodies had semiconductors that was the fascia that's around our organs and muscles yeah the stack of muscles is surrounded by a common stocking if you please, a fascia, which serves as a wiring system for the body that carries the, that carries the voltage from the muscle battery inside out to the fascia, fascia wire, and then it carries it to the appropriate organ. So, mm -hmm. so these electrons travel around the fascia. There's a book called Anatomy Trains right. that maps the fascia around your entire body and shows how like your toes and your brain, everything are all, connected, all connected by fascia. And, and, and the fact that now they're saying it's a, uh, it's a semiconductor, well, it's amazing. Well, it kind of gives uh, greater the importance than to um, certain like therapies and modalities such as fascial stretching technique, right? Yes. So um, I'm going to assume then that with fascial stretching, they're actually going through and like unwinding in a sense, like all the fascia in the body yeah. so that it the conduction is better, like those more, signals. More so um, counter strain technique. Mm. Counter strain technique uh, releases neurovascular bundles, mm. which I would assume there's there's those are areas where like the electron uh, conduction is blocked, right? And you can release those manually. It's fascinating. It, it really the human body is so unbelievable. It's a miracle that it, it was created in such a way. So so again again every organ of the body has its own battery pack. A stack of muscle batteries is uh, what's been called an acupuncture meridian. An acupuncture meridian is simply a stack of muscle batteries. Uh, well, the muscle battery packs then go through individual teeth. Right. Very interesting. All and, of these. And again, a lot of people think of acupuncture as being more like new age and stuff like that because they're talking about meridian and energy. And it's just something that the average person doesn't understand. Well, flow of energy is difficult to grasp. A flow it of is. electrons, that's very easy to grasp. Is that, For some, yeah. It's, it's like transmission of electrons in a copper wire, like you said. You're right. All of these muscle battery packs go through very specific teeth, then they go to the cells. That that part blows me away that it has to do with teeth. Now our cell membranes are made up of an interesting 
collection of uh, or arrangement of particular fats. These fats are called phospholipids. The thing about a phospholipid is that you have a circle and two legs. The circle is an electron conductor and the legs are insulators. They're stacked together legs to legs so that you have two conductors separated by an insulator, which is the definition of a capacitor. A capacitor. Flux capacitor? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a capacitor is simply a small battery. The difference between a capacitor and a regular battery is that a capacitor discharges uh, uh, it. A capacitor discharges. It discharges all of its charge, whereas a battery discharges slowly. Nevertheless, a cell membrane is a small battery. It is continuously fed electrons from the muscle battery packs. Then we go. Uh, we get to go inside the cells and we have another rechargeable battery system called adenosine diphosphate, adenosine triphosphate. So ADP and ATP. ATP is the energy currency of the body. That's what we were taught in school. When this battery is charged up, and that's that's what's produced by the mitochondria, by the way. The When this battery is charged up, it's called ATP. When the battery's discharged, it's called ADP. So it's interesting because the laser we use at the office actually does um, increase ATP. Uh, yeah, it works on the mitochondria. Uh, right. Yeah, and it increases oxygen saturation right. of the mitochondria so you can produce more ATP. Right. And he talks about this too. Um, uh, when there's oxygen, um, I, I, won't, I won't read it because it's so technical. But, there's a lot of technical. But um, it, it says when there's oxygen, uh, the mitochondria can produce 38... So for every unit of fat that goes into the mitochondria, mm -hmm. it produces 38 ATP, which is those batteries, if there's oxygen present. If there's no oxygen present in an anaerobic state, right. it only produces two. So it's like a car that can go 38 miles in a gallon, but when there's no oxygen, it can only go two miles per gallon. Right. It becomes very inefficient. So as oxygen is, is powerful. Then it talks about, and I don't. I think you have some information on this. It talks about the DNA and sc scalar energy. Mm -hmm. uh, scalar in energy implodes into the center of DNA, and it becomes the power supply for DNA. So DNA is another of that four battery packs that the body has. Mm -hmm. It's just so neat. We have uh, our muscle battery packs. We have our cell membrane battery pack. We have our ATP battery pack. Uh, DNA has its own battery system as well. All of these battery systems are necessary to be functional for the cell to work correctly. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if, um, if we're going too deep on this. I don't know if... Well, uh, let, me, let me shift over here just a little bit and kind of do a little bit of a summary. This, is, um, this was summarized um, in April 16th of this year. Um, and the title of this article kind of takes what he did in this first, in this uh, interview, um, and kind of puts it into, I think, a more easily readable or understandable um, product. So it says, five reasons your body's voltage is low. Uh, so we've talked a little bit about the, the um, technical side or, or really kind of dove into the... Uh, yeah, but, and to make it real, low voltage is chronic disease. Correct. Bottom, just, just every time you hear low voltage, think chronic, chronic, disease, chronic illness. Right. So uh, most people believe that chronic disease, pain, and illness are lifelong sentences. How many of you thought that? Um, what if we told you that that wasn't true? I mean, this is a huge paradigm shift for, for all of us. Absolutely. There's a root cause to all of those ailments that can be uh, greatly improved or eradicated by simply recharging your cells to proper voltage. The human cell uh, is designed to run at about negative 20 millivolts, uh, but it takes negative 50 millivolts for your body to generate new healthy cells. So what causes your body's inability to generate proper voltage and in turn operate at such a low frequency that it can no longer heal itself? Um, well, we're going to dive into five root causes of low voltage, according to research by Dr. Jerry uh, Tennant. Uh, your body is a rechargeable battery. We must first understand how the body's electrical uh, electricity works. Um, so a little summary of what we just read. If you look at the muscles, you will find that they are uh, piezoelectric, uh, meaning that 
uh, when they move, they generate and store electrons or voltage, just like a rechargeable battery. Those muscles are also stacked in our bodies in a very specific way, like batteries in a flashlight. So we read all we read all of that. Uh, the system makes up our wiring. Um, uh, makes up our wiring uh, with each, and they're talking about the fascia, um, and each organ uh, has its own battery pack. Uh, like a battery, uh, when the power is drains to zero, the polarity of that system flips, preventing it from storing voltage uh, in the future. So when you when your cells are not at that negative 20 to negative 25 and it gets super low, then it totally flips and they're no longer able to recharge, which means there's no regeneration that's happening, no healing. Um, so when this system fails or the muscles can no longer uh, create and store the necessary amount of electrons to make healthy new cells, our organs stop functioning properly. The key question is what causes those muscle battery packs to lose power in the first place? Now, there is one thing I would interject here because it's not always that maybe that your cells uh, um, can't get to can't does they don't have that power but there's also from a chiropractic standpoint there could be um misalignments causing the messaging system to fail where if you remove that interference you I now mean, the body can kinks in that fascia that, that yes that's the semiconductor for these electrons so right from that standpoint it makes it chiropractic yeah. even more real 100 percent so it says um there are five root causes of low voltage Okay, so f this is surprising because I would have thought there would have been way more. So five uh, root causes, thyroid hormones, scars and tattoos, dental infections, emotions, and toxins. And I love that we're seeing that here because we just talked on last episode about the connection, the mind-body connection, and how emotions affect all of these physiological your processes. Your emotion can make your food healthier, mm -hmm. even if you're eating something that may be unhealthy. Right. So thyroid health, the importance of the thyroid hormone uh, is that the hormone T3 controls the voltage of every cell membrane in your body and the total number of mitochondria in the body. According to the National uh, Institute of Health, nearly five out of 100 Americans age 12 years old and older have a hypothyroidism, have hypothyroidism, which means they lack the proper amount of T3 hormones in their body. Can I, can I say something about uh, this? I hope you will. Because um, a lot of times when they do a blood test, they're checking T4 and TSH, mm -hmm. but not T2 and T3. Yeah, and we're going to talk. He mentions that here too. Is that right? Okay, mm -hmm. we're good. T T TSH is thi thyroid stimulating hormone. So it's a hormone from the brain that tells your thyroid gland to produce more right. thyroid. So and then it's a negative feedback. So if the feedback. So if there's a lot of T4 in your blood, you get lower TSH. If it's lower, you get higher TSH. So a high TSH, low T4, they would call you hypothyroidism but t3 levels are what's more because one of those t's have to get cleaved mm. four t's have to become three t's for it to be active for it to work properly iodine is required for that and iodine deficiency can lead to some of that hypothyroid so issues so um uh let's see so where was I? okay uh, this means that the cells do not have the proper amount of electrons to function properly. You would think then, given how important T3 is, Western doctors would prioritize T3 thyroid tests, but instead they pay more attention to TSH and T4. So what is TSH and T4? TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, is the first hormone created in the thyroid system in the pituitary gland, which tells the pituitary to put out the next hormone, which is T4. T4 then is supposed to be converted to T3, but that can only happen when the proper balance of, um, of zine, iodine, cortisol, progesterone, glutathione, and selenium, wow. uh, which comes from proper nutrition. So this is why we tell you, you have to have all three. You have to have the the you have to be eating right you have to have the right mindset the right emotions and you have to have clear man he is talking all about like this uh, is chiropractic whole, it, philosophy 101 this is, this is what you learn first day of chiropractic school. so what we talk to you guys about all the time um it's just so cool uh let's see where was i without the balance uh t4 never becomes active um 
active T3, setting off the chain reaction of low voltage in the in the body. The problem with standard TSH and T4 tests is that they come out normal, which will tell your doctor that your thyroid is healthy, when in reality, you could be operating at an 80% T3 deficiency. Scars and tattoos. This surprised me. This was very surprising. Yeah, because I always thought a scar was the body creates it. And it's a protective thing. It's a healing thing. And while it is, it's also an entrapment. Amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is crazy. So even though the battery inside may have electrons, they can't go anywhere because of the scar or tattoo. The body's electrical system is fragile and complex and only operates at peak productivity when the delicate fascia surrounding the muscles is unob unobstructed. What most people don't realize is that the scars and tattoos are obstructions in fascia, meaning they create a block, no longer allowing the electricity to flow throughout the body, which enables you to create new healthy cells. Over time, this could lead to chronic pain or illness as the body lacks the proper voltage. This can seem overwhelming as most scars and tattoos are with us for life. But the Tennant Institute, which is um, his, his company, um, has formulated an essential oil blend that is used in conjunction with uh, scalar energy uh, that can help reline the blocked molecules caused by the scar or tattoo, allowing the voltage to once again flow through the fascia. I have some scars. We, Not for we, me. We need some of that oil. I have a couple of tattoos. Yeah, you do. You know, so yeah, I'm going to find out what that blend is. I might have all of it on hand, which would be very exciting. Okay, moving on to dental infections. Um, the brain is the first thing to develop in an embryo uh, from the cir uh, from there circuits travel from the brain down the body and as they travel down the body they run into they run through very specific teeth this solidifies the importance of teeth in our circuit system when one of those teeth starts to decay or suffers an infection this leads to a drop in voltage sometimes up to 80 to 90 percent which is even more damaging um what is even more damaging is that oftentimes a root canal or dental uh, surgery can lead to infection, which um, is often undetected for years, sometimes 30 to 40 years with no pain or sign of infection. This means for years you could be walking around with one or more circuits in your body blocked, no longer allowing for healing um, voltage to get to your organs. It is no surprise that the vast majority of cancer patients treated uh, in the Tenant Institute have had some uh, sort of dental infection in the past. This is not the first time I've heard this about dent, you know, about our teeth. Oh yeah. And that there's just miles of of uh, roots uh, that go through all throughout the body. And I guess we're talking about fascia too, right? That could carry those viruses or bacteria throughout the rest of the body, creating like weird ailments that you know they wouldn't think started in their teeth. So. Um, emotions and toxins are the last two. So let me go through those real quick. To understand our emotions effects on our body, we first, most un uh, we first must understand how our bodies store both memories and emotions. Memories are processed emotions that are in tune with our body's frequency, much like a tuned instrument. It's imperative that we process each emotion as each emotion directly affects a circuit in our body. Um, uh, when we experience trauma or negative emotion, it drops the voltage in a circuit. Uh, we think we are protecting ourselves by trying to forget or ignore an emotion or trauma, but really what we are doing is building an impenetrable wall around it, no longer allowing the frequency to come through and dropping our voltage. Um, for example, if you're experiencing unresolved anger that is going to directly affect the liver or gall that's going to affect the liver or gallbladder circuit. Fascinating. Right. Like they're like they can tie the emotion to what circuit could it could affect um, if you it, uh, extreme. Let's see. Blah, blah, blah. If you are suffering from extreme fear, uh, that is going to affect that is going to affect your kidney and bladder circuit and constant worry will affect your spleen or stomach circuit. By not treating or processing negative emotions, we are uh, directly blocking our body's process healing, process of healing. Western medicine often has you believe that the mind-body connection isn't real, when in reality, our mental state could be the root cause of our pain or cancer. This is when scalar energy uh, can be used to help uh, process those emotions and turn them into memories that retune your body to the proper frequency. Gosh, that's crazy, right? 
It's amazing. <laughs> I, 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 you know, and I, I really want to give our audience solutions too. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I think that's why we need to have a part two on on this. Uh, I agree. And talk about that. I mean, it's it's a little. Uh, it, it's 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 a bit simpler when it comes to emotions because yeah you know focus on your emotions or control them or make sure you balance those negative emotions with some good ones like gratitude and forgiveness and i mean um, but most of us don't even want to face those old emotions from mm, traumas and stuff like that like it's hard resentment forgiveness he, he mentions fear yeah. i mean you, you remember during the uh covid19 pandemic the the people who were fearful were the ones that were getting super sick yeah yeah. And the people who weren't afraid and saying, hey, listen, coronavirus has been around for millions of years. Right. Maybe not millions, hundreds of years, whatever. But it's been around. It's nothing right. new. And people have been getting sick from it before, too. It's just a different variant of it. You ride it out. You get better. Those people didn't get that sick. They yeah. didn't end up in hospitals. Yeah. But the fear and the fear was perpetuated so much by so many people telling them, be afraid, be afraid. Don't go near anybody. We're, people are still scared of a cough. Right. That's why they get sick more often. Someone coughs yeah. on the other side of the room and they get sick. Yeah. Because they're afraid. I know. I, I try to normalize for patients all the time when they come in and they still have, you know, their mask when they've, you know, they're already better. They're not, you know, they're no longer able to pass stuff. And I'm like, that is not, the CDC already did away with that. It's not effective. It's actually more dangerous for you to wear that than it is for you. Like, if you feel better doing it, then, I mean, that's on you. If you're actively contagious and you sure. want to protect the people around you, then wear sure, the mask when you're sleeping. around others. But don't wear it when you're outside. Don't wear it when you're in your car by yourself. You know, just... But I figure if you're symptomatic, you should be home resting. Let your body heal. Right? We, and we talked about how important oxygen is. Right. Without oxygen, your body produces two ATP versus right. 38 right let there be oxygen i think for now um because we're we're gonna have to kind of wrap this up obviously toxins um you know from uh toxins in our drinking water to our food everything else we need to clear that as much as possible and you know what Remove rfk the jr processed. is talking about yeah. that stuff he's and gonna help he, with he's that a lot appointed head of the health and human services yep uh him and hopefully the food babe yep <laughs> they'll work together and um take out some of these food dyes and i'm hoping but your, it's also... your fruit loops aren't gonna look the same yeah it's fine but I mean, maybe we shouldn't be eating Fruit Loops to begin with. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe we should. Um, like, I'm excited for dinner tonight because I put on this mean pot roast, and we've got fresh, like, white and yellow and orange um, carrots, and we have some great potatoes and some some shallots, and I seasoned that bad boy on We're gonna up. Pour some food dye on top. Oh, no, we are not doing that. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to that tonight. Uh, so I would say for right now, before we can get to part two, here's a couple of things to start thinking about. Make sure your water is clean, right? Make sure you're drink drinking good water. And, and you can get water that literally has the pH that he's talking about. You know what I mean? So, so have a water that has a good pH. I think, didn't we do an article recently about how water is different in different parts of the world? Or did I just read that? We didn't go through it. It was really cool. Um, might've been you. Might've been me. Um, so do that. Um, I think also we talked about mindfulness and, and being grateful. So keeping a positive attitude and speaking positive things out loud is huge because you, you need to hear those things too. Um, I think music, um, there are music, uh, different music is, um, can be at different frequencies and different frequencies, as we know, have different effects on the body. So they say there are some frequencies that help to uh, reduce uh, fat metabolization, you know, help to metabolize fat better and store less. There are some that is supposed to help with healing and uh, relaxation or sleep. So, you know, do some research and, and play around with that a little bit. What a fun experiment and the first thing he mentioned was the first battery pack was muscles right and move and exercise she so had contract your yeah. muscles and i mean you know even think about this even um things like roses right rose actually is one of the highest um 
it has one of the highest frequencies of any uh, living object, uh, which is um, 320 megahertz. And uh, so it has a very high frequency. And it said um, that those, when you put something on your body or you, you know, smell something, eat something that has something like rose in it, it's going to increase your frequency as well. So it's really cool that the foods that we eat, the clothing that we wear even, you want to have a higher frequency, you know, um, wool, believe it or not, has a very high frequency as we're getting into, and it's supposed to be very healthy for the body, um, organic cotton, and oddly linen. Um, linen also um, has, a, has a higher frequency and can help um, uh, with uh, improving overall health. So just remember everything that we come in contact with, right, um, has a frequency and um, we need to start looking at things that are going to raise our cellular frequency and allow us to heal better. It's not going to be as hard as you think. I think there are things that we can do every day to begin improving that and combating all the negative um, energy that that we're coming in contact with from cell phone towers and things like that. There's a lot of Wi-Fi. We have a lot of negative energy that is impacting our overall health. And I think we should talk about those things too, um, you know, down the road, um, talk about what we can do to improve it and some of the things we should be more cautious of and, and give some tangibles. Hopefully... You know, we've given a couple of things that you can start thinking about and looking at uh, right now. And I say do some dive into this. It's a really cool, really fun uh, arena to kind of dive into. So. Absolutely. Boy, this was a long one. Yeah, it was very technical. So maybe we should do a warning in the title, Sean. <laughs> 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 long they very technical after thanksgiving they needed that that's true you know they, they, they've been resting and relaxing for like four days wearing their stretchy pants that's right so this is this is, this is a good good time to have this uh, and don't and, forget let us know if you want us to get that machine and start testing it yeah and, and uh, put some essential oils on your uh, tattoos that's right i don't know which ones yet so we'll look into it that's right all right well thanks for listening we'll see you next time take care